If you want to understand basic assessment for orthopedics in physiotherapy, you can look into my another video. Link I'll be providing in the description of the same video. Namaskar and welcome to my channel Physio Trends. This is me, Physio Prem Shah, MPT Ortho and Sports, also working as associate professor in Vikas College of Physiotherapy. My dear students and my dear friends, in this video, I am going to explain you all differential diagnosis of knee pain on the basis of age, location of pain, aggravating factors and which structures are affected. On the basis of that, we, will, we are going to cover full differential diagnosis of the knee pain. So stay tuned with me till the end of the video to learn everything about the knee pain diagnosis and differential diagnosis. So let's begin with today's video by understanding first the basic structure of the knee joint. In knee joint, we have three bones involved, lower end of the femoral condyles, upper end of the tibial condyles and the patella bone. All together forms two joints, patellofemoral joint and tibiofemoral joint, surrounded by so many ligaments like middle collateral, lateral collateral, anterior cruciate, posterior cruciate and also meniscus on the articulating surfaces. Apart from that, we have so many bursas present and all together functions as a knee complex to provide us friction free movement in the knee joint and any structure is affected, patient might get knee pain. So how to start with diagnosing knee pain for the patient? So first, we have to classify those patients in three categories according to age, which is less than 19 years of age, 19 to 45 years of age and more than 45 years of age. Reason behind that is because in particular age group, we get different different conditions and it becomes easier to identify the, those conditions. So let's say in less than 19 years of the age group, the condition of knee pain can be because of any congenital conditions like genu recovatum, genu velgum, genu verum if not corrected properly. Any abnormal forces can act on the knee joint which can cause knee pain for the patient as well as there can be overused activities of the muscles, tendons and the other structures or there can be trauma to the muscles, ligaments, bursa and because of that patient might be getting pain. In another age group 19 to 45 there can be history of trauma, accident, road traffic accident or there can be overuse of the particular structure which can be causing pain to the knee joint. So whereas when it comes to more than 45 years of age group patients, there is one more extra condition which is added which is called as degenerative condition which happens because of the degeneration of the articulating surfaces and patient have a typical pain in this particular condition that we need to identify. So if a patient comes to us with 20 years of age complaining of knee pain, we cannot diagnose them for the degenerative condition. So that makes a simple classification for us according to the age groups to divide them for their causative factors of the knee pain. Next factor we can utilize is location of the pain. So location of the pain can be on the anterior side or the posterior side. In anterior also it can be anterior superior or anterior inferior. If it is more on the anterior superior, more of the quadriceps fibers are involved. If it is on the anterior inferior, it can be more of the ligaments or it can be more of the patella tendon involved which can be causing the pain for the patient. If it is on the posterior direction, it can be posterior lateral or posterior medial. In posterior direction also there can be structures involved like hamstring muscles or else all the ligaments like ACL, PCL, LCL or MCL or apart from that meniscus injury also sometimes gives pain on the back of the knee joint. So this is how we can understand according to the location of the pain. The next way of finding out or differentiating the condition can be aggravating factors. So as we perform it in the normal assessment as well for any patient pain, any joint, we perform active movements, passive movements and the resisted movements. So while performing active movements of the knee joint, knee flexion extension, patient complains of pain that means more of the active structures like muscles and tendons are involved for causing the knee pain. If patient complains of pain while performing passive movement there are more chances that it is involvement of passive structures like ligaments that is complaining of more pain while performing resisted activities there are more chances that more of the active structures like muscles tendons are involved for causing the patient's pain 
and the next one is weight bearing now this basically is additional for the knee joint because in knee joint weight bearing is maximum and if during weight bearing patient complains of pain then there are maximum chances that articulating surfaces or meniscus are affected for the patient so this is how on the basis of aggravating factors also we can classify patients diagnosis and after that we can come to a conclusion that whether the tendon is affected tendon or muscles are affected whether the ligaments are affected whether the bursa is affected whether the articulating surfaces are affected or meniscus is affected for causing the knee pain for the patient so once the general analysis of the knee complex or knee joint is done then we start looking for the particular structure wise and the first thing what we look for is if any fracture is present in the bones around the knee joint so for that we have to look for the presence of patella fracture or tibial plateau fracture because they are the most closest to the knee complex so that we can see from the x-ray analysis or else by the clinical features of the fractures so once the fracture analysis is done then we look for the tendon injuries in tendon injuries also the most common injuries that we find out is jumper's knee also known as patellar tendonitis this condition is very common in children who has more of the jumping activities or stair climbing activities or running activities so in this condition what happens exactly is the attachment of the tendon near the tibial plateau gets inflamed because of the over activity of that particular structure or as there is inflammation of the tendon just above the patellar bone and because of that patient has pain while performing any jumping activities or running activities so that is how we can come to a conclusion that if patient is having jumper's knee or not the next condition can be hamstring tendonitis now this is also one of the very common condition which mostly we will see in the sports people athlete population because of the sudden jerk to the hamstring tendons or repetitive injuries to the hamstring muscle can cause this hamstring tendonitis so this condition also we can identify with the help of performing general assessment like active movements passive movements apart from that taking the history from the patient if there is any trauma or repetitive injuries due to any sports conditioning then that gives us confirmed diagnosis that person is having hamstring tendonitis if patient complains of more pain over the biceps femoris side or semi tendinosus side so after tendons even muscles are associated with the same mechanism of injury which happens because of the over activity especially in sports person because of running jumping or any exaggerated activities in this particular muscles can cause strain in the muscles so how to identify whether the strain is present or not again the same thing asking patient to perform active movements resisted movements or sometimes resisted isometric movements while performing this particular activities if patient complains of pain or increasing in the symptoms but while performing passive movements or at rest there is no pain then it confirms that the pain is coming from the hamstring strain or the quadriceps strains according to the area involved if it is on the anterior direction that means the quadriceps muscle strain is there if it is on the posterior direction that means the hamstring muscle strain is present 